Public Speaking Project presents Supporting Your Ideas by Lisa Schreiber, PhD, voice talent by Jill Sabarbro, with Morgan Hartraft as the media production specialist. Most of you are probably familiar with the fairy tale of the three little pigs. In this story, three young pigs leave their home and mother to find their way in the world. The first pig, being rather lazy, decided to build his home out of straw because it was the easiest thing to do. The second pig, having a little more motivation, built his house out of sticks even though it took a little more effort. The third pig, understanding the importance of having a sturdy home, took quite some time to construct his home from bricks. One day, a big bad wolf came to the straw house and in an attempt to get the first pig, blew down the straw house and ate the pig. Next, the wolf went to the stick house and although it took him a bit longer, he blew down the stick house and ate the second pig. Later, the wolf went to the brick house, but no matter how hard he tried, he could not blow it down, and therefore, he could not eat the pig. The moral of this story is that planning and forethought, along with hard work, will allow you to be successful. Building a speech is much like building a house. Just as the foundation and frame of the house provides the base around which all of the other parts of the house are built, your supporting materials provide the foundation for your speech. If you don't have adequate, well-constructed supporting materials, like the straw and stick houses, your speech will not have substance. If your speech lacks substance, your message will be lost along with your credibility. Gathering effective supporting materials is an important part of the speech writing process. Supporting materials help the audience make sense of your talking points and they hold your audience's attention. Good supporting materials also build your credibility and provide evidence for your ideas. The purpose of this module is to introduce you to some techniques you can use to support the points of your speech. In this module, we will look at the various types of supporting materials and some examples of these supporting materials. If you would like to learn more about supporting your ideas, you can find an entire chapter about this subject in our free textbook. Public Speaking, the Virtual Text at www.publicspeakingproject.org. Supporting materials can be defined as the information that you use to clarify your ideas and strengthen your arguments. Supporting materials can include information such as statistics, facts, definitions, descriptions, comparisons, narratives, and testimony. Let's look at each one of these in turn. Statistics are the first type of supporting material that can be used in your speech. Statistics refer to the summary of numerical data that has been collected, analyzed, organized, and published in a simplified format. Statistics are a powerful form of evidence in the United States as we tend to value science and research over other forms of knowledge. Statistics are often used in commercials as when you hear that a product is 100% natural that over 10 million copies have been sold, or that four out of five dentists surveyed recommend a particular product. For example, in a speech urging people to go to college, you could cite the research report by Baum and Ma that shows college graduates earn $20,000 per year more than those with only a high school diploma. In a speech explaining why we are paying so much at the gas pump, you could show that in 1998, the price of oil per gallon was $10.87, but by 2008, the price of oil had reached $98.44 per gallon. The second type of supporting material involves the use of facts. Facts refer to the knowledge or information based on a real occurrence or on something that is known to exist and can be independently verified. Did you know that the term lousy came from the 14th century and referred to someone who is infested with lice? Lice is the plural form of louse. And did you know that the repeated injections of the saliva from body lice, as they bite humans, produces a slightly toxic effect or an allergic reaction, which makes the human host feel lousy? Facts are not only interesting and sometimes disgusting, they can also be used to help make your point. Explaining to your audience that the Earth emanates thermal radiation into space can not only be verified by NASA as a fact, 
It can also be used in a speech arguing that global warming may not be as catastrophic as we once thought. If you are giving a speech about causes of auto accidents, you can refer to a 2010 report by the U.S. Department of Transportation that shows 20% of injury crashes involved reports of distracted driving. Definitions are the third type of supporting material and are used when you want to provide a statement that describes the essential property, the meaning, or the significance of a word, phrase, or idea. Thus, if you wish to argue that the death penalty is immoral, you should probably begin your argument with the definition of immoral, and then proceed to show how the practice of the death penalty corresponds with your definition. You can use the literal definition of a term which provides the true, factual, objective meaning of something that we could find in any standard dictionary. In a speech about caring for houseplants, you might advise listeners to make sure their plants show signs of turgor, which means that the stems and leaves are normally distended from being watered properly. You can also use figurative definitions, which are metaphorical or symbolic representations that are achieved through the use of poetic language. For instance, in the book The Forever War by Joe Haldeman, the main character, William Mandela, explains that life is a bunch of cells walking around with a purpose. And finally, you can use culturally generated meanings of terms, such as friend me, Google it, bromance, or other slang expressions. One such instance can be found in the term the millennial generation, a term used to describe those born between the years 1981 to 2000. According to the Pew Research Center, this generation is characterized by confidence, political progressiveness, narcissism, a sense of entitlement, and tolerance. The fourth type of supporting material that can be used is a description. Descriptions provide detailed, vivid word pictures of people, places, things, events, or objects. The point of a description is to paint a picture with words. Although radio is not as popular as it used to be, the radio is an excellent place to find talented DJs or sports announcers who can verbally provide enough details so you can vicariously experience what they are describing. For instance, Barbara Ehrenreich is a writer who took a series of low-paying jobs to live the experience of poverty, and she described one of her customers at the family restaurant where she worked like this. There's Benny, for example, a short, tight-muscled sewer repairman who cannot think of eating until he has absorbed a half an hour of air conditioning and ice water. We chat about hypothermia until he is ready to order some finicky combination like soup of the day, garden salad, and a side of grits. But while some of the descriptions we hear are pleasant, as when someone describes the antics of a small child, other descriptions are more chilling. Consider this account from Gisela Pearl, a Romanian physician who was captured and taken to Auschwitz in World War II. She describes the horrifying treatment of pregnant women in the death camp. They were surrounded by a group of SS men and women who amused themselves by giving these helpless creatures a taste of hell, after which death was a welcomed friend. They were beaten with clubs and whips, torn by dogs, dragged around by their hair, and kicked in the stomach with heavy German boots. Then, when they collapsed, they were thrown into the crematory, alive. 